Go ahead and be seated. Another great time of praise and worship. Amen. Hey, it's time for Children's Church, so kids, come on down. I saw something out of the corner of my eye moving, and I think we had some confetti still coming down from, from upstairs from our last week's celebration. And I, I thought we were having some more snow. I thought, man, it's going to be pretty good snowing, and it's going to be 80 degrees this week. Amen. So kids, you guys have a great time. Boys and girls, have a fun. We'll see you all at the end of church. Love seeing so many kids here at First Baptist West. Today, I want to continue with the idea of Christmas messages, and today's title is Great Joy. We've had hope, we've had peace, and today we want to look at at the joy that we have, that we can have and you can have as a Christian. I want you to take your Bibles, turn to the book of Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8, reading down to verse 11, and this is a very familiar text of Scripture, especially in this time of season. But I want to look at today at the message of great joy, even in the midst of everything going on. And they're still coming down. I need to stand over there and so I can keep y'all's attention when this stuff starts moving. All right. Luke chapter 2, start verse 8. Let's go ahead, if you are able to, would you please stand with us? You at home, join in as we read Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8. And the Bible says, now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be seen to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Father, we thank you, and we love you, and we give you praise today for the great blessing of of Christmas. We give you, Father, praise for the greatest gift that we could ever receive, and that is the person of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that as we look at this text today, and as I go through this message, that Lord, each one of us here, each one watching on this live stream, Father, could experience today this great joy that was declared to us by these angels. And Father, that is the message given to all of us even here today in the midst of all the turmoil and struggles of life, that no matter what's going on, Father, we have great joy available to us. So I pray for every person in this room, pray for every person watching this program, that Father, you would just bless them with your presence today. And that we receive this message as you desire for it to be received. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Great joy. After hope. After peace. Now comes joy. Now joy, again, when we look at it in a biblical sense, it's different than what the world might offer to us. So I want to look today at biblical joy. Not just joy, because again, I think so often we take the things of God and and we take that word and we move it over into man's type of mentality and we throw into a different definition than what the Bible actually means about joy. So when we're looking at biblical joy, I want to look at this. The first part of of, of the definition is, is evident, and it is a feeling of good pleasure and happiness. That's what joy is. Now, the problem is the world usually stops right there. But I want to focus a little bit more on the last part of that definition, where it says that that is dependent upon who Jesus is rather than who we are or what is happening around us. So biblical joy is predicated by the fact of who Jesus is to you at this moment in your life. If Jesus is not important to you, then I promise you, you're not going to be able to experience great joy at all times of life because this is talking about no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's going on around you, no matter what's going on in society, my friends, listen to me. If Jesus Christ is, if we understand who he is, and at this point in our life, he is all that we need, he under, that we understand that, that he is the center of our existence, I promise you, then we are able to have 
great joy. When the angels came and they declared it to the shepherds, they said, behold, this is, you have now a message of great joy. And they, they didn't stop there. They went on to explain how they had great joy. It's been said, because unto you this day is born unto you this day in the city of David a Savior. And now because of that Savior, because of his, the central part of, of, of life that he is going to place in you, he now will bring you great joy. But apart from that, you don't have this great joy. And so we see that the idea in Romans 15, 13 says this, Now may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace. Now look, in believing. That's how you're going to get this great joy. And God will fill you with that joy in believing and that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this great joy that the angels declared to the world, this great joy that the angels declared to us today, is again predicated on who we believe Jesus is to us today, who he is in our lives, where we have him placed in, in our existence. That then is what Jesus can give us peace. That's where the great peace comes. But I want you to understand something. The process of learning to respond with joy during times of trial produces a, is a conscious awareness that God is at work in our lives. We have to know this, my friends. We have to know that the, it begins when we are consciously aware that everything that's going on in our lives today, God is still at work. If I can't find that, if I can't put myself into there to realize that whatever is happening today, my friends, God is still working in my life. He's still working in your life. He's still working in the life of this church. He's still working in the life of this city, in this state, in this country, in this world. That's going to have to be in the forefront of my mind. When we get distracted, and listen to me, that's what Satan wants to do. Satan always wants to distract us. He always wants us to go from focusing on the things of God to the things of this world. And that's why the world is so shiny. That's why the world is so glittery. That's why the world is so loud. That's why the, Lord, the, the, the world is so painful. Because we can get focused on the, on, on the things of the world, the glitter of the world, the, the even, listen to me, even the pain of this world, that we can get focused on that and lose our focus on God. And listen to me, when we do that, then this great joy that's declared to us today is not going to be evident in our lives. So that's what the whole focus is. That's what the angels were trying to get the shepherds to do. Focus off of the things of this world. Focus on the Savior. Focus on that baby because he's the one that's going to bring you great joy. But we will look around in our world today. We even look around in the church today. We look around in our own families, our own personal lives and say, where is that joy that God keeps telling us about? Where is that joy that the angels declared? And that joy is again focused on Jesus. If we're not focused on Jesus, we lose focus on the great joy that's ours. But again, that biblical definition is again predicated on, is dependent on who Jesus is rather than who you are. I lose joy if I become the center of my existence. Amen? I lose joy if things going on around me are the center and the focus of my existence. That again is why Satan wants so hard to distract you. He wants so hard to distract me on worldly things because it's at that moment the joy is no longer in us. We lose that joy. But listen to me, that joy cannot be taken from us. That joy can be only lost when we begin to focus on things other than Jesus. Whether it's good or whether it's bad. Whether it brings all the things we want or where it rocks our world. That joy, it can still be there. 
So we look and we see that the angels declared that joy, that great joy. And what, the reason the angels had declared it, what was coming from that is what they had been waiting for had, the, the, that's now happening with all that they've been waiting for. You've got to understand the, the shepherds, even though they were what most people would have classified as the lowest form of, of the people of the Jewish nation, they even knew the teachings of a Messiah coming. They knew there was supposed to be a Messiah. The angels were now declaring to them all that they had been waiting for. Can I tell you, my friends, today, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father right now. Jesus is coming again. Everything that we're waiting for, everything that we've learned, listen, it is going to take place, and it is there that that message was declared, and the angel said, to you now comes great joy. So the message is to all of us today, right here, right now, the Messiah, Jesus, is bringing you great joy. It's what they've been waiting for. My friends, it's what we know has already happened and what we're now waiting for again. And we need to understand that the power to overcome is now ours. And that's what he was declaring. That's what they were declaring to the shepherds. The time of you to overcome is now at hand. God has sent the Messiah, the Savior of the world, to you. Now, some scholars view this idea of overcoming that is ours as an already not yet kind of mentality. Jesus, listen to me, has already been born. Amen? Jesus has already lived. Jesus has already died. Jesus has already been resurrected. Jesus has already ascended to heaven. The victory is now ours. It is happening all around us. So what we need to understand is that the kingdom of God, it has arrived, but the final effects have not come yet. We still have to deal with situations in our lives, amen? But Jesus is alive. The victory is ours. It has happened already, but the total totality of it has not yet happened. Jesus is coming again. So we can celebrate the fact that we have a Savior. We can have great joy because that Savior can be the center of our lives because we have called out and said, God, I know that I'm lost, and God, I need you in my life. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. And right then and there, joy enters into our lives. But listen to me. There's a greater victory coming. Amen? Amen. So that's where we're talking about. It's already happened, but it's not fulfilled fully. There's coming a day that we'll be spending an eternity with God. All of those who believe. That brings us that great joy. And then I want to wrap it up with this. Joy is available, listen to me, because of its greatness, because of the focus of Jesus as the center of our lives, joy is available at all times. That's not what the world thinks, but that's what the angels were declaring. That at all times, joy is available. As a matter of fact, James 1, 2 says this, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it all joy. That even in the worst time of your life, you can still experience that joy. My friends, Jesus was the great example of that. Jesus is the great example of having joy in the midst of the most difficult times of our lives. Hebrews 12, 2 says this, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. How in the world could Jesus, even if he was hanging on the cross, and folks, listen to me, the, the, the cross was not a pleasant thing for Jesus to do. He felt everything. He felt the pain of the nails. He felt the, the pain of the whip, 
He felt the pain of the crown of thorns. He felt the humiliation of being hung naked on the cross, exposed to all mankind. He felt the rejection of the people who cried out all of these things and even the two other thieves that were hanging on the cross with him and the insults they hurled to him. Folks, he felt that. He felt when God turned his back on him and he cried out, literally, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Listen to me. Jesus felt all of that. He felt it. But he counted it joy when the devastation of his physical body, of his spiritual self, when all the sins of the world, your sin, my sin, all the sins of everybody else were cast upon him at that moment. But yet he still counted it joy. So I want to close with this. Why did he endure it? The reason that he endured it. Why did he endure that? Why could he sit and say joy? Avery Rimmler said it like this. Jesus didn't endure the cross because it wasn't excruciating or unbearable because it was. The thought of enjoying an eternity with us of not enjoying an eternity with us was out of the question. He looked at you and he looked at me and he said, I don't want to take any chance of them to have to ever have an eternity without me. I am their answer. I am their hope. I am their peace. I am their joy. I am their life. And without me, they will never spend an eternity with God. I love them that much. And because he loved us that much, and he wants, listen to me, he wants to spend an eternity with you. He wants to spend an eternity with me. He wants us to celebrate in heaven one day, no matter what goes on in this world. He wants us that badly that he said, I count it a joy to get to do this because he looked beyond all the shame. He looked beyond all the pain. He looked beyond all the rejection. He looked beyond everything. And you know what he saw? He saw you and he saw me. That's what he kept his eye on. My friends, how then do we endure these same difficult times? How then do we get through these things? How then do we go in on in this life, that, in this world that is crazy? How do we do it? Because you and I need to learn who God is. We need to understand who Jesus is. And we need to look beyond all of our stuff and look beyond that just as Jesus did. And when we look beyond that, we will see Jesus. And when our eyes are on Jesus, then everything else will be joy even in the struggles of life when nothing nothing seems to be going for us even when our lives are shaken to the very foundation of our existence look beyond now despising this And looking to the author and the finisher of our faith that will bring to you and me the great joy that the angels declared. We bring to you good tidings of great joy. Not because of who you are. Not because of who I am. Not because of what's going on in your life at home but because of who he is to you right now. My question then as I close up, who is Jesus to you? That's the question. Jesus, if you'll remember, sat around the campfire talking to his apostles, and he said, hey, guys, who do people say that I am? And they began to declare all these things. Some say you're Elijah, some say you're prophet, some this, some that. And then he looked at them after they said all of that, and he said, okay, now let's get down to the really important thing. And here's the really important thing that you and all of you at home, myself, we all need to answer. Jesus asks, then who am I to you? Who am I to you right now? Am I the one you have your eyes on and your heart on? Am I the one that is in the center of your existence? 
Or am I just something that you talk about? That you celebrate because it is such a Christmassy season, a beautiful season with lights and all that. Am I just a baby in a manger to you? Listen to me. If that's who he is, you are missing the greatest message given to us. Great joy. Looking beyond all of ours. Looking in the face of Jesus. Many of you know that my, my favorite hymn is close your eyes upon, keep, keep your eyes on Jesus, look full into his wonderful face, and all the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Put your eyes on Jesus today. Who is he to you? That's where you're going to determine, can you have great joy this morning? Can you have great joy tomorrow, the next week? No matter what comes our way, can you still have great joy? It all is on who Jesus is to you. I pray today that he is your Savior. I pray today that he is the center of all of you, who you are. That your focus is on him. Who is Jesus to you today? I'd like you to bow your heads and as we step into this time of invitation. My friend, this is the time for you to respond to who Jesus actually is. And my question to you today, and sitting here or you at home, is Jesus your Savior? Has there been that time in your life that, man, you, you felt like you just needed him and you just said, God, I'm lost. I have no answers and I need you so badly God would you forgive me of my sin and would you come into my life and save me let me put my focus on you God through Jesus Christ if you haven't done that then I want to encourage you, would you the gift is there for you it's laid out there would you come today would you receive Jesus as your Savior that you could receive the message of, of great joy for now you have a Savior. Maybe you're here, you maybe at your home and say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. But man, that joy, I, I, I've been shaken. Stuff going on around me, the things in this world, the things that I've been focused on, Man, they're rattling me. And I, 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 I need a new focus today. Man, God's not rejecting you. He's calling you. Oh, would you just cry to him today? God, let me put my eyes back on you again. Turn my eyes on you. Turn the eyes of my heart on you, God. I can experience that joy. Life isn't easy. But as you looked at me and endured the cross, may I look at you and endure this life that I can find joy again today. Now, my friends, in just a moment, I'm going to pray. And if you need to come, I'll be here. You can come pray by yourself if you want to pray with somebody or just right there where you are. You don't need me. You don't need anyone else. You need to today to refocus your eyes, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. And all the things of this earth are not going to go away, but they'll, they'll go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Who is Jesus to you? Father, hear our prayers today. If there's someone here, someone home, Lord, that needs to turn to you, would you focus them, bring them to you, Father. Give us strength and encouragement in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to...